Hi, everyone. Just a few final comments about lesson 23. Uh, we were talking about binomial distributions. For example, flipping a fair coin 100 times. Well, what is the most likely number of heads? The most likely number of heads for a fair coin? If flipped 100 times, 50. The probability of 50 heads was about 8%, and that was the highest probability, even though you probably wouldn't bet your life on it. Now, you might find that rather curious, that the probability of 50 heads is not that high. Uh, we'll notice that the total probability of one is being spread out in these, around these middle values of x. You can see how the probabilities are declining rather slowly around here. Uh, the probability of 51 heads or 49 heads, they're about equal to p of 50. And then we do get a serious dropping off down here. Uh, even when we get one standard deviation away, we get a pretty serious dropping off in the uh, black zone over here as opposed to the red zone. Now, the probability of 50 heads wasn't even that likely. What about the probability of getting exactly 500 heads out of 1,000 flips? The probability of getting exactly half heads out of 1,000 flips. That's even smaller. It's about 2.5%. What about the probability of getting exactly 5,000 heads out of 10,000 flips of a fair coin? That's going to be even less likely, not even 1%. So, and by the way, I'm assuming that n is even. If n is odd, the probability of getting exactly half heads is zero. But let's assume n is even. If you let n approach infinity, that means that the probability of, ex of getting exactly half heads is approaching zero. And then it kind of makes more sense how in a continuous distribution, the probability of getting a particular number is zero. Because take a look here. Uh, if you consider n approaching infinity, this probability is approaching zero. It's a very similar idea. If n approaches a, if, if n is a million or a billion or a trillion, then this becomes very, very close to zero. So then you can see how probabilities can be zero in continuous distributions. A second comment. Why do these normal approximations work for binomial distributions? It comes down to the central limit theorem for sums. So for example, let's say that x is the number of heads on a hundred independent flips of a fair coin. I forgot to mention fair coin. P equals one half. Then x can be considered to be the sum of 100 indicator variables. For example, x sub one is one if the first flip is a head, it's zero if the first flip is a tail. It's kind of like Christmas lights. Are they on or off? x sub two, it's one if the second flip is a head, it's a zero if the second flip is a tail. So each of these lights, each of these 100 binary indicator variables is a one if it's on, a success, a head. It's a zero if it's off, a tail. X counts successes, the heads, the lights that are on. Well, 100 is big, it's more than 30, right? We start with a uniform distribution that's at least symmetric, and the CLT likes symmetric distributions. We're considering a sum, of 100 IID independent and identically distributed random variables from a symmetric distribution, the sum is about normal, according to the CLT for sums. So this connects together with the topic of the CLT from the previous lesson. It all ties together. Take care.